Okay, hello every, everyone. My name is Vasily Sabirov. I am lead analyst and co-founder at dev2dev.com. And I'm very glad to welcome you today on this summer webinar about the retention. And uh, this is this webinar is pretty unusual for me and for us because uh, this is the first uh, English language webinar for last five days, five years. And uh, I'd like to introduce my guest today. This is Mr. Oliver Kern. Hello, Oliver. Hey, how are you? Uh, Oliver is a noted growth hacker and mobile marketing guru and has helped up companies ranging from indies to market giants like Rovio and Wargaming. In his more than... Uh, many years. Many years, <laughs> yes. In uh, marketing and advertising, he has marketed hundreds of casual core and MMO games in the online and mobile space. Oliver, I'm really happy to see you today on our webinar. Yeah, looking forward to the next one and a half hours. It's going to be very interesting. Yes, and let me uh, let me explain what uh, will we do in this uh, 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 ninety minutes. First of all, I will read my speech. This is you know the basic part about the retention, um, and after that there will be the speech from Oliver. Oliver uh, has prepared the presentation about the retention, about the debunking the myths, as we say in the head of our webinar. And after that, there will be a discussion. I have prepared a lot of questions for Oliver today. And uh, you can also um, ask your question in the chat. So please use the chat. And uh, we will uh, read your questions, most interesting and most important from your questions in the latest part of our webinar. So please think we, uh, what can you ask. So I will open now my presentation. And I will read my part of the webinar now. All right, Oliver, I think you can switch your camera and mic off during my, my, okay, great. Okay, today I'm going to speak about retention and onboarding, and I will make the basic part, uh, the basic part of this, this metric. First of all, I'd like to ask you, what is, what is loyalty? What is loyalty for you? And um, we also always need our players to be loyal to our games. But what is loyalty? We don't know the, the, the answer. There is no such a metric called loyalty. Is loyalty equal to happiness or satisfaction? Well, I'm not sure. Because, uh, uh, you know, those players who play some, you know, real, real casino and who lost all their money, are they happy or are they satisfied? I'm not sure about it. And those players who play in some, uh, who use some product which are monopoly on the market, I'm also not sure that they are uh, they are loyal to them. Maybe they have no chance to, to play, to use something extra. It is difficult to measure loyalty, but uh, we can, we definitely can measure disloyalty. Uh, well, disloyal, user are disloyal, Users are disloyal when they leave your product. So if they remain active, it means for us that uh, they can be loyal to us. So that's why retention maybe is it's uh, the most important metric of loyalty. Um, and now I will show uh, two usual ways to calculate the retention. The first way is the classic retention, the usual retention. And usually when we say retention, we mean classic retention. For example, day one classic retention uh, is the share of users who uh, visit the game one day after the first launch. And usually uh, the share of, uh, usually the day one retention is the indicator of good first time user experience of good first session. The day seven retention is the share of users who remain active after seven days, on day seven after the first visit. And usually the good day seven retention is the indicator of good meta game. Uh, day 28 or 30 uh, is the share of users who remain active on day 28 or 30 after the first launch. And uh, if your users are still active after those huge number of days, uh, that it, it means that they really love your product. But that's not the limit 
because uh, some games, some MMO games, uh, usually can calculate uh, retention even for two years or three or five years. I have never seen the retention calculated by 10 years, but I, but I think there are some companies that calculate. And also there, there is a metric called rolling retention. It is pretty similar, but it has one uh, important feature. For example, if you, if you take day seven rolling retention, it says that uh, it is the share of users who remain active on day seven after the first launch, launch or later. And so those words or later mean that, first of all, the rolling retention will, will be higher than the classic retention. And second, that it will be uh, harder to calculate because, uh, you know, every new session of every user uh, will init initiate the recalculation of rolling retention. We are not sure that this, this user was active uh, some days before, so we will recalculate it every time. So that's why not everyone calculates the rolling retention. It is harder, uh, it takes a lot of resources, and so that's why you, we usually calculate the classic retention. Why retention is important in the game operating? If we will calculate uh, the revenue of game as uh, quantity multiplied uh, with quality, that's the root model, but anything, anyway, this model works. It means that revenue is the multiplication of audience and loyalty. Or if we go to the metrics, it's the multiplication of MAU, monthly audience, and ARPU, average revenue from user. And where is the retention uh, in, this, in this formula? Retention can be found here because retention has an effect on monetization metric. Usually the higher the retention is, the higher the monetization metrics are. And also the retention is here uh, because you know the higher your retention is, the higher your MAU is, the higher your audience is. So uh, in this model, again, very rude, but, but model, uh, retention, uh, we, we can find the retention twice, here and here, so it's squared in a formula of revenue. And if you will calculate the, uh, the LTV, there is a, there is a method uh, called uh, multiplication of retention and, and EBDAO. Uh, again, we can find retention in both multiplicators. Retention is here and retention can be found also here. What does it depend on? So which factors are, um, uh, can change the, the value of retention. First of all, it's the structure of traffic. Usually uh, the retention of uh, organic traffic is a bit higher than retention of paid traffic. Uh, again, I saw some companies which use the paid traffic and uh, where the paid traffic has higher metrics values than the organic, but usually on average, the organic has the better values. Retention depends on, on the day of the week. And our surveys show that uh, retention of users who came from uh, who came on Fridays are higher than the retention of users who came on any other days because they have the whole weekend to play and they have enough time to to explore the game and to understand it. Retention depends on the platform and the market. For example, if we take some um, games which exist on uh, App Store, Google Play, and Amazon. Uh, Usually, on average, uh, if you take the same title, the, on, on average, the higher highest retention value will be on Amazon because there are less. The number of uh, application on Amazon is less than the number of application in uh, Google Play or App Store. So uh, the competition for every minute of users' free time is less on Amazon. And also retention uh, depends on the life cycle phase. And uh, let's explore this table. Uh, this is a result of uh, some analytical survey and they took 400 games and they divided it into four groups from the most financial successful uh, to the less uh, financial successful games. And they uh, measured some metrics, some metrics of quality such as retention and ERPU one week from launch and three months from launch. And if you will see the result, uh, retention became 
became lower for every group. So the organic behavior of retention is the slight decrease. Uh, and retention will, be, will, not, will not be horizontal, will not be stable if you will do nothing with your game. Retention will, will decrease slightly. You need to know that. And also, if we're talking about retention, I need to talk about some retention-like metrics, which are similar to retention, but which shows some different, some different KPIs. For example, the lifetime. Uh, lifetime is the average, num average time that user remain active within, uh, within his or her playing in the game. And usually the lifetime can be calculated as the integral value uh, of uh, retention. Sticky factor is also uh, some interesting metric which can can be um, which can also use as some retention like metric. Sticky factor is calculated as DAO divided by MAO, and it shows the stickiness, you know, the the rate of activity of repeating activity of play of play. And uh, retention like metrics is churn. Uh, churn is the only metric which is good when it's negative, and churn can be calculated bo both for users and for money. And now, uh, let's explain how to work with your retention. First of all, I'd like to show you the hook model infinity loop. Uh, it works with the same uh, uh, cycle. Start with a trigger, then action, then reward, and then investment. For example, if you see some beautiful picture, uh, you want to post it on Instagram. And after that, uh, so the trigger is the, is the picture, the action is to post it. The reward is the number of likes that you get. And the investment is, uh, is how you uh, change your attitude to the people who liked your picture or not liked the picture. The same thing can work with the games. For example, if the player has some trigger, it can be push notification, it can be five minutes of free time, it can be some events or discount. Then after that, user goes to play, for example, to play some match. User will get the reward. And what is important for this reward, it should be unpredictable. User should not know uh, the size of this reward. Because if user not uh, doesn't know the size, it means that uh, it will it will make another intrigue for user to return to the game again, and after that the investment. So if user has some reward, for example, some gold coins, uh, he or she will need to spend it somehow. So check if your game has this cycle. Now a few words a few words about activation and onboarding. What is activation? Is the sequence of the events which lead to understanding of the game's feature, the product's feature. Uh, if the user uh, makes some, uh, some sequence, after that, user can be called activated. And uh, since that moment, the user has less uh, probability of churn within the last days. And the moment when the user understands the feature the, the, the key features of the product is usually called the aha moment. It doesn't correlate with the aha music band. It, it means that user said, said, aha, I understood, understood the key features of that, that project. And uh, I'd like to explain you some uh, aha moments from different services. For example, in Facebook, the aha moment is reaching uh, seven friends within the first 10 days in, in Facebook. It means that if you reach seven friends within the first 10 days, uh, you will have the less probability to churn Facebook uh, within the long, long time. So that's why Facebook offers you some new friends uh, when you re register. Uh, Facebook can uh, give you new friends by email, by phone number, by your location. By uh, I don't know their algorithm, but I know that they are advanced. Um, the Twitter aha moment is reaching uh, 30 following people. It means if you reach 30, uh, it means that every, let's say, 30 minutes, you will get some new tweet in your feed. And uh, it will uh, make you the reason to return to Twitter again. 
For Dropbox, uh, aha moment is uploading the first file in the cloud. For Zynga, I know only that they calculate aha moment as the day one retention. And for LinkedIn, uh, they don't post the exact values, but they said that it's also reaching X players, uh, X, X friends within the first Y days. Uh, so, but they don't say the exact values. Why do we need to know the aha moment? Because if we know that, uh, we can make this obligatory for the new users. Uh, for example, let's explain the to-do case. They tried to find uh, they tried to find aha moment, and uh, you can see that the aha moment was uh, the, the activation process was very you know comprehensive. And after that, after they found it, they make it obligatory for new users. And you see that uh, all of the metrics of quality of new users, such as activated visitors, average number of invites, and average number of posts, increase significantly. So maybe it's the reason for you to make, to make uh, the same the same survey and try to find your aha moment. How to improve your onboarding? Uh, well, we can divide your onboarding into uh, three phases. The phase of identification, education, and engagement. On the phase of, uh, what do we know? We need to know about the phase of identification. First of all, we need to remove barriers. The identification should be easier for player. And uh, that's why a lot of games allow you to uh, register, register using your Facebook or your Gmail. Uh, what is important, you need to let uh, user experience how the product works before the registration. A lot of products start uh, their first time user experience with a registration form and where uh, you don't know how to create the password. Usually the player, the user, has only two minutes of uh, attention and uh, it will be very bad if you will spend those two minutes trying to find the optimal password. If we uh, go to the next stage is the education. Uh, what shall I say? That users should immediately understand what to do and why. Why do they want, need to do that? So uh, try to uh, use only quality content and try to polish your first time user experience. And if we're talking about uh, B2B services, the free demonstration is uh, the good practice. For example, in dev to dev we post the demo without any registration. And the latest phase is engagement. And uh, you need to leave your player alone with the game. Users should achieve something so that uh, they would be reluctant to lose it. You need to set the goals for your player uh, and player shall, shall understand what to do now. And uh, if we're talking about complexity of your game within the first session, your game shouldn't be very difficult and neither it should be too easy. And there is a formula, I like it very much, about the player happiness. Their happiness is working like that. Uh, if you, uh, the actual complexity, the fact complexity of your game uh, is very close to, to the expected complexity of the player, then the player happiness increases significantly. But uh, if they are far from each other, the, uh, the player happiness decreases significantly. So you need to guess, you need to guess your complexity. Uh, or maybe not to guess, maybe to use A-B testing to polish it, to, to try to find the optimal complexity for the first session. And if you are talking about the first session, uh, there is there are some ways how to optimize it. First of all, try to record the first session of several users. You can use some web visual instruments, or you can uh, just track it with, uh, using some analytical platforms. You need to view this recording, and after the user number five or maybe user number 10, we will be able to identify some typical problems. Um, and those problems are not so easy to find if you use only funnels or segments, for example. And now I'd like to show you some new trends in retention, some new features, how my, uh, analysts work with the retention now in the uh, current year. For example, now uh, a lot of a game analyst use the retention by minutes because there is a correlation. Have a look at this chart of day one minutes played with the day two retention. 
you see the higher the, the number of minutes, the higher the retention value. And it works not only in average, but also for every quartile. And even if we take the first 10 minutes uh, of play, we will see that it uh, can allow us to forecast the day two retention. So we, we can forecast the retention of the next day, having the information only about the first 10 minutes of play. So that's why the first 10 minutes of play is the object that need to be analyzed. And for example, I can show you some situations. Uh, let's see, you can see the flat here or the gorge, uh, some decline, uh, some, some little decrease. Uh, and uh, you need to avoid it. You need uh, to make this chart more smooth. Uh, you need to grow it steadily. Because uh, if you have this situation, it means that uh, on minute number three or four, user see sees something uh, that uh, can, in can increase the probability of churn for that user. So you need to find this moment. You need to let this chart to be more uh, smooth. Another trend is the goal settings you need to understand which goals are in a player's head on every moment, uh, which objectives has the user inside the head. Uh, and it works for, it shall work for different stages. For example, if we're talking about short-term retention, every minute user can uh, see uh, the, the goal, the short-term goal. Every, let's say 20 minutes, uh, the user can see the midterm goal and it shall work on even for long-term periods such as you know day or month or even year so uh, you need to show the progression you need to show the future for the player another trend is the long-term retention optimization i saw some analysts who decided not to focus on the short-term retention but to focus on only long-term retention why because the percentage of players is higher on day 30 than on day seven and on day one. Uh, so they increase the number of players uh, than the retention value. And also uh, pay players who start paying later usually are more uh, variable. Usually if user pays within the first session, it means that on average, this user will be not, uh, not so valuable as the user who converted a few days after. And usually, if we're talking about whales, the whales usually converting uh, on, uh, not, not on the first day, on day seven, on day 11, 12, or later. And uh, why do we need to focus on retention, uh, on long-term retention? Because day one retention is not about the game, it's about design. And uh, day seven and day 30 retentions are about the game itself. And uh, the last slide from me is, uh, the new focus on retention. We need to focus uh, not on the churn. We, we don't need to understand the reasons of churn. We need to, to understand the reasons why do they stay. So how can we work, work uh, with those users? First of all, uh, let's take some users who remain active after three weeks or after one month. We need to find them. We need to understand which features do they use uh, we need to explore the sessions. Maybe we will find some features that they use uh, that they uh, make them active. And also, the good idea is to explore the first-time user experience. Usually, the analytical platform platforms allow you to explore their past, and maybe you will find some uh, features, some steps, some important steps that uh, make them active. Uh, so. That was everything from my part. And uh, thank you very much for attention to the my part of speech. And now, uh, Oliver, it's your turn. I will show you, I will switch your presentation on. Uh, um, okay. I just need to kind of figure out how I can kind of move between the slides. Let me 
see how I can kind of do that. You can switch the slides. Oh, okay. I think that's cool. Okay. So I think this was this was great, Vasily, and I think it sets really, really nicely the the stage. Um, I think there was uh, there were some very, very, very valuable uh, insights there on uh, you know what it means also for uh, game developers and how they can kind of look at retention. I'm going to try to kind of uh, uh, look at a, a few things from a slightly different angle, um, trying to explain a bit more why and how retention actually matters for uh, for game developers, or why not. Um, and I'm also going to share a few examples um, um, uh, from from my experience. So just quickly, a few words to me. So I'm uh, Chief Commercial Officer at a company called Lockwood Publishing. They're based in the UK, in uh, Nottingham, uh, just around the corner where Robin Hood used to live. Um, I'm also on the board of directors of uh, two other smaller uh, mobile game studios. Um, I used to be chief marketing officer at Jagex. They uh, used to run one of the very, very big, or still do, uh, run one of the um, very big MMOs called RuneScape. And I sometimes also help some companies with growth or play their interim CMO. So I want to talk a little bit about um, retention and, and also explain a little bit um, about what we actually did with regards to retention in, uh, in Lockwood Publishing um, and, and show where we are today and why we are where we are. Um, so first of all, um, you know, if you Google, Good retention for games. Um, you know what you will see is uh, is something I don't know where it came from, um, but uh, I think many years ago somebody put up this uh, this information that a good retention would be uh, forty percent on uh, day one, uh, twenty percent on uh, day seven, and uh, ten percent. That's you can't read that here. Uh, ten percent on uh, day thirty. Um, and that would be a good retention. Um, so that sounds pretty good. And if you reach those numbers, you think like, okay, awesome, I've, I've made it. Um, but for some reason, um, you know, if you are developing, for example, a hyper-casual game, uh, Voodoo will still not uh, publish your game because they suddenly say like, oh yeah, well, no, no, no. For us, uh, no, day one retention needs to be at least 65%. Um, Otherwise, we're not going to uh, even consider publishing your game. So show us those kind of numbers. So that's obviously um, a little bit of a dilemma for, for game developers to kind of figure out, um, so what is actually um, uh, good retention? Um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat irrelevant. It's very relevant for a lot of things, and I'll come to that. But no, at the end of the day, uh, retention on its own doesn't say anything, because you know if if uh, if you have a, a hyper casual game with uh, you know 40, 20, 10 retention, um, you're probably not going to be very successful. Um, if you have a mid core game and you're aiming for 65% day one retention, that is quite unlikely to achieve that. Um, and at the end of the day. What you're looking for is, and we'll come to that later in the in the presentation. What you're looking for is you want to understand like what does this actually mean for uh, for the money or the potential money that I can make. So um, retention somehow is a is a part of that, um, and retention can certainly tell you. And Vasily, um, you know, explained that very very nicely. Um, you know, if you have uh, some some strong numbers uh, on your retention, it can tell you that you know if day one retention is really great. It tells you that there is definitely an interest from users. They understand on the day zero when they install the game at least what this is about and seem to like it somehow. Um, so they come back, right? Um, so there is definitely an appetite for this kind of game. So that's great. Um, and as he was explaining, day seven. Um, um, and day 30 down the, down the line definitely will show um, you uh, how, how people actually understand the game and enjoy the game 
and eventually, you know, especially when it comes to day 30 and beyond, um, uh, can make this actually a habit. What it does not tell you, though, is um, are you going to make money? Are you going to be successful with this game or not? Um, and that's kind of an, uh, at the end of the day, something that everybody is, is trying to figure out very, very quickly. Are we going to be successful with this game? Preferably even at a, at a very early stage of the game, as a, as a, at a prototype stage, preferably even. Um, as a game developer, I want to understand, like, okay, does this game have a chance? Um, and um, retention or even the benchmarks for that kind of game will only tell you part of the story. I'm going to give you an example here. So I did, like, um, two... Um, Two retention curves, um, just, uh, you know, based on classic retention, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, a day one, meaning like the day of install. Um, I have uh, uh, obviously 100% retention. Uh, day two, which is, you know, the classic day one, we still have like 40% left. Day seven, uh, 20%. And day, oh, it would need to be 31. Anyway, uh, would be uh, 10%. Right, um, and then I took like another model, and here I have uh, you know thirty and fifteen, and then eight percent retention. Um, and I did do like a little bit of difference in the ARPDAL. So here we're talking about eight cents, and here we're talking about ten cents. And um, if you then look at the results over like one hundred and eighty days, so half a year. What that shows actually in in uh, in your lifetime value, you know, this one has one dollar three. That's not much, um, but this one even has one dollar twelve. So you know, it's not and much worse retention, especially kind of in the in the beginning. Um, so you know, it, retention is not everything. Um, retention definitely gives you an understanding of do people actually enjoy this kind of game. And at the end of the day, you know, um, if they do enjoy your game and if they stick around and, and play your game, they're also obviously also more likely to uh, st spend money. Uh, somebody who, uh, who doesn't come back will also not uh, invest into this product. And it's also definitely the case that, you know, a user, users are today at least much more educated than they were maybe like six years ago. Um, they will make a purchase decision a little bit more conscious. Um, so usually a, a player will invest money when they feel like, okay, I am still going to play this game next week or next month even. Um, and based on that, they might make a purchase decision and not so much like, oh yeah, this game looks nice. I mean, they might do it in if they're in the first session after five minutes and feel like, oh yeah, cool, this, this looks nice and I'm just gonna do it. Um, but you know the 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 real payers, the one that will the ones that will also do like a, a repeat purchase, um, they are the ones that um, you know need a little bit longer time. So at Lockwood Publishing, and I'm going to use this as a really nice uh, case study at Lockwood Publishing, when we started in 2013 with our game um, Avakin Life. Um, we also had um, a little bit of a dilemma. We're today a one-app company. We have a, a 3D virtual world called Avakin Life, and we're basically developing, operating, and publishing this uh, product. And we started uh, in 2013 to uh, build this product, um, and um, initially um, had, when we launched it, basically a terrible product. It was real-time multiplayer game. In 2013, it was even more challenging than it is today. Um, and we were, um, we were definitely struggling. We saw that there is an interest, so we had like uh, a lot of installs, but you know, even day one retention was not very, very good. Um, and, um, and we thought like, okay, so what the heck are we going to do? So initially, all we focused on was okay. How do we, how do we get our day one retention up? Um, you know, oh maybe it's the first time user experience. Let's see. Uh, you know, we're at like thirty five percent day one. Maybe we can kind of uh, increase that more and uh, 
you know, re create something more interesting. Maybe we should put people directly into a scene so that they kind of um, can chat with others directly. Um, so we did a lot of experiments and we're totally razor focused on day one retention. And at some point uh, we stopped and, and, and said like, okay, day one retention is what it is. Um, and um, that was probably somewhere here. Um, I mean, we were already growing nicely, don't get, don't get me wrong there, but um, um, the actual uh, growth started to happen when we, when we actually focused on something else. Because what we actually did is we started focusing on the longer term retention. So we stopped actually looking at, uh, at day one and day seven uh, retention, all these kind of very, very early metrics. Um, and started focusing much more on the on the longer term retention, um, and uh, yeah, and this is this is actually um, had a massive impact for us on our uh, Dow numbers, um, and I'll I'll get to that um, uh, later on. So it you know this obsession that we initially had on uh, on early game retention. We then thought like, okay, you know what? We're actually, we're, we're going to try to focus much more on other things um, that are much more around the long-term retention. Um, to, to, and that is actually what, what provided this growth. Um, and what we did is we basically started doing life operations. Um, it, it was for us at least uh, really the, the thing that delivered us uh, that long-term term retention. And with life ops, what we mean with that is you should kind of think of it almost like an editorial cal calendar. What we th felt was like, okay, people come in there and um, they want to, they want something new whenever they come in. They want to, uh, you know, have something that they're kind of familiar with. That's kind of nice, but they also want something fresh and new. Um, so what we started doing is we started um, developing like a editorial cal calendar. So initially what we did is we started uh, releasing new items into the game. So uh, new clothes, uh, new furniture, new apartments, etc. And we did that like twice a week uh, on a Tuesday and on a Thursday. That kind of made it a little bit um, uh, employee friendly, <laughs> I would say. So no, no, uh, no heart attacks on the weekend. Um, we still had the Monday to prepare. And then on Tuesday we would release new items. On Thursday, we would also release something something new into the game, um, and still had the Friday if something would either delay or uh, we had some fuck ups or something like that. Um, but what we then saw is like, okay, actually, um, you know, people start to learn um, this and and started to create almost like a habit um, to check in on a Tuesday and on a Thursday what was actually new. So we thought like, okay, this is actually pretty good. Um, so what if we uh, start doing more? Um, you know, uh, we can't really release more items, but you know, let's let's try to do something then on on a on a on a weekend, some kind of a life event, something that happens in the game where you can participate. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so then people started to come, you know, more on a Tuesday, a Thursday, and on a Saturday. Um, then we thought like, okay, yeah, well, actually, you know, we could also, um, you know, always launch like a new, a different new sales promo every Friday. So then people started learning like, okay, hey, great. So I can come in Tuesdays, I can come in Thursdays, I can come in Fridays and I can come in Saturdays. Um, and there is always something else going on. So always something else happening. And then we thought like, okay, you know what? Uh, why don't we do something every day? So, um, so we started creating new, uh, new contests actually for, for our players um, where there's really every day something that you can actually do. Now the tricky bit is if you, if you do these kind of things, you need to make sure that they don't become very, very repetitive because if you look at this over like multiple weeks, it feels like, oh yeah, this is always the same. And if it's, if it's always the same and very predictable, so let's say you would always do a 50% off on, on, on something. If it becomes very, very predictable, then it also becomes quite boring for users. So they knew that there was something new coming, but they 
didn't know until the last minute actually what it was that was coming. So to give you an idea, um, um, here's like an, an overview of like a, th a three week uh, kind of calendar. So let's say we had um, some new Nike trainers coming into the game here. We had like a, on, on a Tuesday, we had some uh, new apartments coming uh, into the game. Then we did like a special bundle offer. We had a live band on a Saturday. Um, then the, the next week there was new swimwear. Um, that was kind of the, the theme of the week maybe to some, some degree. We had some decoration uh, for the terrace that helped kind of nicely with this uh, new house. We did like a 30% a off on those new Nike items that we had the week before. And then on a Saturday we'd do like a, um, um, like a, uh, how you say, like a, um, uh, some kind of competition where you would find uh, a mermaid somewhere at a beach um, and you could get like a nice price in the game and so on. Um, so, I mean, the, the challenge with, with kind of life ops is that you have to make sure that it's not super repetitive. That there is still something something new, and I've, I've I myself I do play quite a few um, uh, more like RPG style um, games, and those that you know where there's always something to do, and always you know once once in a while something new where I always know okay next weekend there will be an event that I can do with my clan, um, and then there is another small event on a Tuesday that I want to participate. Um, you know, those, those are the ones that actually create this long-term retention. So what, what does that actually leave us with? So, uh, so if retention is just one important factor, what's, what do I do uh, with, with this? Um, how is this relevant for me? So I would uh, recommend that you maybe take a, a different approach to determine actually the success of your studio or your game. Because very often retention is like an, an indicator, okay, this game will be successful or not. Um, and as I try to explain, that's, it's one, in, one indicator, but it's not everything, right? So I, I would like to actually rather make sure that, um, you know, um, a, a, a game that has potential also kind of gets to its full potential. So, in order to kind of uh, look at that, I, I think it's important for any studio um, to look at like, okay, how many, what kind of money do we actually want to make or what do, do we need to make from this game or also from uh, as a studio and, and, and really look at it more of a top down uh, in, a, in a top down manner. And um, to kind of get to that, uh, um, uh, model, um, there, is a, there is a very nice and quite simple way to kind of look at that because uh, one factor there is kind of the ARPDA, the average revenue per daily active user, and that usually comes from your, your ads, ARPDA, and there are lots of things that you can do to kind of make this bigger or, or less big, um, plus the inner purchase ARPDA, right? And it, it, at the end of the day, it depends very, very much on what kind of game you have. If, uh, if you have a game that is 100% in-app purchase, obviously this will be zero. Everything needs to come from this. Um, but there are a number of very successful games. Um, you might be losing out on, on some players that just don't have a credit card, but um, that's obviously a, a decision to be made. Um, and this will, this will basically determine your, your general art DAO. Um, you should always look at it in a net uh, kind of fashion. So exclude um, the, 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 the charges and taxes and all these kind of things that go to Apple and Google um, and rather look at um, generally what, what ends up in your bank account. And then you will d multiply this by your number of daily active users. Now your number of daily active users is something where, you know, there are, there are quite a few factors actually that um, will determine what your number of daily active users is. Um, your number of daily active users actually is, um, is uh, the number of daily new users that you bring in or that you get times the number of days 
that these users play. Let's say over the course of a year or half a year, whatever you want to you want to look at, um, and um, and that will basically um, calculate your your potential or your maximum number of daily active users. So imagine you have um, one daily new user coming in and he spends only that first day and never comes back. Then obviously, you know, you have one new user coming the next day and one user new user coming the next day, but then it ends. Um, so it never goes up. If that new user would stay on average, let's say two days, um, then you, on your day one, it's going to be one user. On day two, it's going to be um, two, use, uh, two users. But then on day three, it's still only going to be two users. So your, your maximum number of, of, of daily active users will then be two. So here in this days of play, this is basically where, where, um, where your retention comes into play. Because it will also um, allow you to calculate your, your, your number of days that a user actually plays. Um, so the daily new users, they obviously are a mix of a, or have a lot of factors. You can obviously manipulate this number by buying users. You go, you do some Facebook campaigns or Google campaigns or whatever, and then that number goes up. But it obviously um, needs to be something sustainable. You can do something um, in terms of up to up store optimization. So you can make sure that uh, um, more users actually, um, you know, um, come through by offering um, a really, really good uh, app store page. Um, so there are there are also here quite a few things that you can do um, in terms of marketing, but also in terms of how you present your game. And then the number of days of play, that is something where um, it doesn't matter if these days of play come from the longer term retention or from the early retention, but that number um, will be something that, um, you know, has a massive impact on your your potential number of daily active users. So to give you a, an example, um, you know, a, a hyper casual game may have like days of play of, I don't know, three or four. Um, you know, a game like Avic in Life will have a number of days of play of uh, 10. Um, so, so that obviously, because it's also a multiplier, has much more potential um, to, to kind of create a bigger um, daily active user number. And you can imagine that, you know, or, or um, you know, what we did in terms of life operations is we increased this number actually from something like 6.5 or something to close to 10, um, just by really focusing on, on, on life operations and events and really creating this calendar and um, ex exercising that. So that's, um, so that's a, a really, really great model to help you understand like, okay, does, does my game have, ha, have the potential? Can my studio, on what kind of money does my studio need to survive? Which means, you know, what, what can I realistically reach here? And what can I realistically uh, reach here from the new users, from my retention? And here on this side of the, of the model, you know, what is a benchmark for this type of game? You know, if I have, like a, I don't know, a very mid-core or hardcore game where maybe my audience is not as big. You know, the art doll can be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 cents net. Um, you know, if it's hyper casual, it will be, I don't know, six, seven cents or something like that. So um, yeah, you have to kind of obviously see where you, where you stand and how you could possibly uh, come to something that creates a nice amount here on a daily basis for you as a as a studio for that product or for your studio as a whole. Um, and um, yeah, with with this lovely picture, um, because that is what uh, uh, retaining users is also for me about. Um, um, I, I'll uh, leave the floor now to questions. I guess is that right, Vasily? for your beautiful speech. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Thank you very much for, for your speech. 
And uh, yes, now it's time for questions. And I uh, already see the question. Could you please switch to the previous slide with the day revenue model? Yes. Uh, the question is how do you calculate this the days of play? Is it average consecutive game day, days new user has? Or how do you calculate it? I understood it as the um, average inter time interval from the first launch to the latest activity of a uh, user in the game. Is it right? Well, you can also do it. I mean, I, I, I do. A, I mean, I'm using a very crude because I'm not a mathematician, right? I use a very mm -hmm. crude way uh, to create uh, kind of my LTV models. Um, so basically, what I do is I, I fill in here um, all my retention numbers. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and then um, whatever I have, and out of the rest, I basically in Excel create like a power curve yeah. here, and and use the formula, and fill in basically the blanks for all the days that I don't have. Now these, if I add these retention numbers, this is also my days played. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So um, from a model, I can. I can do this in order to calculate um, my LTV. Then I just use the ArcDAO and multiply these numbers, and then I, um, yeah. I add them up. And that's how I kind of create. I know it's not a perfect model, but you know, very often, for me at least, a uh, good enough indicator um, mm -hmm. to, to see, like, OK, where, what is roughly the, the value of a user. So the right? days of um, play, oh, sorry. yes, sorry. So the days of play, I can also calculate from the retention here. Right. Um, if I add these numbers up, that will give me my days of play. So you sum this column up. Yes. Okay, got it. So yes, uh, as a mathematician, I can say that it's a pretty good model. It, it can be better, but it will be, you know, a bit more comprehensive if you will add some new new indicators to that formula. I, I like I like this model very much. Yeah, it's simple, but it's um, you know yeah, it's still a model anyway. <laughs> so we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's simple and clear. That's important for the model. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Oliver, the, uh, the question for you, how do we work with the retention benchmarks? So where do we find it and uh, what do we focus on it? Which uh, values are you looking for when you're looking for retention benchmarks? Yeah, so, <laughs> um, so I get my benchmarks because I'm in the lucky position to work with across a lot of studios in Europe. Um, so obviously, I, uh, over the last five years or so, I've just seen a lot, lot of different games, um, successful games and not so successful games. So I kind of started to, at least in my head, have an understanding of like, okay, this is probably a benchmark. And then there is obviously, um, you know, word of mouth. So speaking with other developers and trying to understand like, okay, what, what do they hear? What do they know? Um, um, and and what do they see? I, I, I think that is kind of crucial to kind of at least form um, some something where you say like, okay, this is this is kind of a, a decent benchmark for for my kind of game. Um, generally speaking, I would say the more casual the game, um, the higher the potential for high early retention. The deeper and more complex the game. Um, Depending on how how well you're able to kind of explain that or, or onboard a user, um, usually what I would expect is that the early retention will be not so great. So mm -hmm. I mean it shouldn't be terrible, but you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't um, try to focus on you know going to like forty or even higher than forty percent on on a mid core game. It's very hard to kind of achieve that, and you may mm -hmm. take. You know, I don't know, let's say uh, 20 updates to get to something that actually makes a difference. It can still happen, don't get me wrong, um, but the effort is huge. Um, so there, I think it's it's more important to get those um, days of play from the long-term tail and that they actually really engage deeply with the game every day. Yeah, got it. And what, <laughs> if we are not so lucky as you, what can you recommend to us? Which sources to track? I think there are. <laughs> I think there are. There are probably all sorts of um, reports and and uh, from all sorts of let's say you know attribution um, providers, 
um, speeches at conferences, etc. So people are usually willing to share that kind of information, um, and and it's it's always worth like also asking. Um, yeah, so I, okay. I, I think that's 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 what I what I would recommend. There are also even some some sources that claim that they uh, track retention. I think Aptopia, for example, um, claims to to share kind of retention data across games, but they're obviously a very expensive tool, and I'm not so sure how exactly they would be able to kind of measure that without an SDK in there. So, yeah. I've heard that uh, if the studio is huge enough, they just can uh, ask the reports from Google Play, for example, and they provide the very detailed report about the retention of this genre. Well, that is true. So, I mean, if you have like a, if you have some contact at at, at Google, um, they will also give you bench uh, your benchmarks. But they, what they do is they will look at what what how are your peers performing versus you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that that is definitely also also a, a good source. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. The next question for me uh, is um, well, imagine the situation that you you see the metrics of the project and the retention is bad everywhere on day one, day seven, day 30 and further is really bad. Well, what to increase first, the short term, let's say one day or three days or the long term, let's say 30 days. What will you start with? I would start with the short term uh, mm -hmm. for sure, but I would not focus. I would, I would try to shed away a little bit from day one. Um, because day one, I mean, um, that would, as you as you explained in your presentation, I mean, it's it's not only monetization wise, but just generally, it's also the design, the overall look and feel that has quite an impact also on day one retention. And sometimes you don't want to necessarily change the whole game, right? Um, yeah. So uh, you know, it it may be a too big of an effort to to kind of really significantly increase that. But you know, there is one thing to be said. So a user who comes back day one, he sees something in this game. Yeah. And if he then doesn't come back, you're not meeting his expectations. So I would really focus much more on day two, day three. And you had some interesting slides there um, where you said like, uh, you know, time spent in mm -hmm. that. I would, I would say day one time spent, uh, how, how they behave there. And if there is a correlation and what they do there Etc. I think that has a dramatic impact because what you need to do is you need to make sure, okay, you have a shitty curve basically in terms of retention. So it goes down dramatically on day one already, right? So now you need to make sure that this curve gets as flat as quickly as possible. So somehow you need to kind of get these people that are generally interested in your product to actually, um, you know, uh, uh, get what they're, what they're looking for. Um, so that's where I would kind of try to focus on. That sometimes can be a little bit the balancing, like the, uh, yeah, um, th those kind of things. Is it too easy? Is it too hard? Um, yeah, I, I think you brought up a f quite a few very, very good, uh, good points there. But Thank I would you. not co focus on day one, more like day two, three to seven. Yeah. That's well, I agree I'm with you. Because if we're talking about monetization potential, well, it's strongly correlated with the long-term retention. So we need to focus on long-term retention, but the easiest way to increase it is to increase the day one retention first. Yeah, I agree. Okay, and uh, do you use rolling retention in your usual practice, on the classic one? I look at it, but I have, so there are some tools that kind of provide that, um, but usually I don't, I mean, I see some value there. It's nice if I see that it's growing over time, but I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I'll be very honest. Um, I see the value there because obviously, you know, uh, it shows you kind of the opposite of churn <laughs> in a way. So people who are gone forever. Yes. But... Um, or, is, or yeah, but I, I I personally don't really use it much. I don't well, know. Maybe others do. Yeah. I also don't use it, and because uh, 
the most correct answer on the question, what's your role in retention at the moment is, I don't know, let's wait. Uh, <laughs> so we, we never know the exact value of uh, role in retention. That's very true. And if you're talking about classic retention, it's, you know, we, we just need to, to, to pass only one day to know the exact value of day one retention. Mm. Uh, and we cannot say something uh, about Well, in your... Google Play, at least you can see also the un uninstalls. They are probably definitely part of your uh, rolling rolling yes. retention loss. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. But I, I, I hear you. Yeah. Well, you mentioned hyper-casual games and uh, how retention works on monetization hyper-casual games. What's the difference on hyper-casual games in terms of retention? Um, well, hyper casual games operate, you know, have have very different different metrics and success metrics. I mean, uh, high high early retention is key uh, for sure. Um, and you know, the big uh, the big publishers like Quali or Voodoo or whoever else you go to, they have very high um, demands to kind of publish a game because, and that is probably getting harder and harder. Um, so I know that Voodoo is now also kind of re looking for a certain day seven retention, etc. So it's it's definitely getting harder and harder. For them, the key thing is, um, you know, they need very very early high retention because mm -hmm. um, because for them the curve is quite, you know, it, it drops but it it continues to drop quite drastically. So it's not uh, they just don't re achieve such a flat curve. There will be some people obviously that will stay forever. Just because they have the phone there, or find some pleasure in that in that specific game, but like the majority of the players will just kind of drop dead pretty quickly. So they look at you know how many they look at also they look at a lot of other metrics. They look at the overall session length. They look at how many videos and where can we kind of show those ads and videos and all these kind of things. How, how much is the um, the um, take rate, so to say, of the uh, rewarded videos that are in there, all these kind of things, because they will make, they will make your, their ARP DAO. They don't have this part of the ARP DAO. Mm -hmm. so they, they need to also make all of this um, from the ads ARP DAO. They're able to get many, many new users if they are able. So what they will do, they will also uh, test, um, you know, ad creative and pick pick even a theme based on that you know if they can do on on a reasonable scale they can get like in the US installs for I don't know 10 15 cents or something like that plus they have high retention then they can make it work um, but otherwise it's going to be really really hard because days of play will be relatively short they need to get a lot of new users here that which they can um, need to get cheaply because they don't come by themselves and the market, the stores also don't necessarily feature them. So, but they can get to a very high day DAU number, right? So the ARP DAO traditionally is not very high. It, it all needs to come from ads and um, you know, that um, needs to be quite high even when people are not very engaged, um, they still need to see a number of ads. They still need to not feel totally annoyed. And it's important that, um, you know, there is also a good balance between kind of interstitial and, uh, and rewarded videos. So they will measure the, the engagement with the, with, the, um, with the video offers that they have in there. Does that make sense? Yes. And, um... If you're talking about usual formula of retention for average game, it will look like 40, 20, 10. Uh, in your opinion, how will it look uh, like for hyper casual games? 65, 70? Um, I've seen games I, even when they were not called hyper casual or, or they're, 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 they were even different. So I, I remember like in 2014, I worked for um, a company called Mag Interactive and I helped them with initially their marketing. And there we had uh, day one retention back then of like 70% and day 30 was um, about 20% or something like that. So it was huge, um, but yes. we were only making money from, from, from ads and we had to kind of fill a lot of ads. There were no rewarded videos. It just didn't fit the, the game. Um, but we were able to get to massive DAU numbers, right? 
um, it was also quite a quite a viral game. So um, you know, the, the, uh, as a company, um, the studio made a lot of money on that on that product. Um, they had massive um, DAUs because Days mm -hmm. of Play was very very high. It was quite viral, so daily new users was also quite high. Abdal was low. It was lower yes. than you know what a Gram Games would have seen as a reasonable success or something like that. Back then, we were talking about like two cents, two and a half cents Abdal, but it still made the company millions. Um, so um, you know, and I think that is still possible today. So it, it's it's a mix of these things that will actually make it a success or not. And uh, this app consists more on ads app DAO than on in-app app DAO, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, for for Mac Interactive, the game was called is called Ruzzle. Uh, it's mm -hmm. like a word game. You play against somebody else uh, in yep. three rounds, um, and there were just between those rounds there were ads. That was it. Um, but um, it made a lot of money. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I've seen the example where. The structure of revenue of hyper casual games was 98% at Abdao and only 2% in Abdao. Yeah, they always do this, uh, you know, unlock the game. Um, yes. So to say no more ads kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And um, about the mechanics of retention, uh, you work with different games and different genres and studios. How do you think which mechanics of retention are more, are more successful or less successful according to your experience? Um, mechanics of retention. Well, I think there are kind of the artificial marketing ones, like push notifications and these kind of things. I mean, if you go back to your infinity loop, um, those triggers, um, yes. you know, you can actually kind of, the best ones are the ones that you don't have to kind of send out, <laughs> so to say, right? So if, if you somehow are able to create a habit for the user, um, over time, then that's a good thing. If you have to kind of uh, constantly uh, uh, kind of uh, push them somehow, then that's uh, that will be hard, and some some at some point there will be some resistance. Um, but it matters, especially in the early days. Um, you know, that's where the game is still top of mind, um, and that's where you can kind of create that habit. Um, you know, after. I don't know, three, four, five days. If you haven't caught up, caught on with this product, it's going to be very, very hard to then bring you into into a habit. But That's you can bomb, bomb them with some bonuses. Please go back. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can obviously try harder and harder, so you can kind of create these segments, um, you know, um, send out to everybody um, who hasn't logged in, um, then send out, um, you know, one day later and even more attractive, and then one day later even more attractive, just to see if you can get anybody back. Um, but it's, it's, it's a tough one, uh, I think, and it requires a lot of work to kind of build all these different segments, and the, the value of that is quite, quite... Uh, limited usually so it's better to kind of um you know make sure that um I, th I think it's important and that's why you also mentioned some of those other kind of uh kind of metrics that have to do with retention i think it's important to have an eye on like um session time per day especially for kind of new users or on the first day and these kind of things because you need to make sure that it's also not um possibly too long or too short and these kind of things. So you have to kind of also keep those those things in mind. Um, because what you want to do is you want to actually, so if a user, I would go even further, you were, you were showing the minutes played and they have an import, impact on, on your retention. I would also say that if, you, if you're able to get somebody to do more than one session on day zero, um, that is also a higher chance that that user will also be open to come back the next day. If you only have like one session um, and that one a relatively short one or a very, very long one, um, there might be a chance that that user doesn't come back the next day. Okay, thank you. And um, the next question is, um, 
again, imagine a situation that you use different analytic system, uh, let's say one free system and one paid system, or one your own system and one is uh, taken from the market, and uh, they show the different retention values. Let's say- Yeah, they all do. 30 percent in one case and forty percent in another case. What will you do with that situation? Because it's really the the usual case. It is always the case. Yes, um, I think it's important to understand why there is a difference or why there potentially is a difference. Um, and the usual factors are um, uh, depending on where in the world the calendar day starts. That can have an impact, for example, or mm -hmm. it can be something. Um, uh, let's say I'm uh, kind of um, my time is UTC and I'm buying mainly in the US that can have an yeah. impact on, on retention or day one retention all those little bits and pieces and the different um, platforms will have different different ways to track that unfortunately and it's a total disaster I, I agree on that and so what I usually do is in communication with others everybody will always use the highest number um, and that's fine. Um, for me, I look at retention more over time. So I, I, I mm -hmm. rather want to understand what are the trends. You know, um, you were showing that uh, that graph that you know over three months, the the day one retention went down. That is like alarming. So uh, that is much more important. And that it then doesn't really matter as long as you use the same platform. You know, whatever that number is. You know, can I increase it, or is it declining, or is something breaking and it's getting worse suddenly? So that's how I mainly uh, really use retention um, in order to kind of calculate days of play. I need to kind of use something that I feel could be the most accurate. Well, I have a funny case about about the calendar way of calculating the retention. Uh, as a, as a guy working in analytic system, I created the way uh, of uh, more accurate calculation of retention is to calculate it not by calendar, just not to depend on the time zones, but by 24 hours intervals. So uh, every first launch is a start of a 24 hour interval, the start of the first day. And uh, uh, the day is the different thing for every, every new user. Yes. And uh, we decided to calculate it by 24 hour intervals. But, but the numbers is lower, so nobody will like your your product. Yeah, and, and the numbers are really lower. Let's say <laughs> it was forty by calendar, but it, it became twenty five by twenty four hour inter intervals. And uh, a lot of our users asked us to return the previous retention back because it was higher. Exactly, uh, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Everybody wants to hi see higher numbers, but it's not the point. The point is. Um, you know, does that, are you able to kind of manipulate that? Or do, yes. can you do things that actually impact this or not? No. Yeah, you're right. And the key difference is that when we calculate it by calendar, then we can, uh, we, we catch all users from hour zero to hour 48. And when we calculate it by 24 hour intervals, let's say if you're calculating the day one retention, we calculate the users from day 24 to day 48. So yep. that's why it's lower, it's lower. Yeah, no, I get that. All right, and the last question for me that I prepared for today. Um, you had a lot of questions. Maybe the users will also have some well, questions. I <laughs> hope so. Um, well, I am uh, I, I like your articles and I, I always promote your article with uh, 1,000 of users. What 1,000 players can really tell you about your game. I will send the link to the chat. Yeah. Um, so I, I like it very much, but the question is not from me, but from one of your fans. Uh, in the, this article, you put the link to the sample size calculator. What's oh, wrong with the calculator? Exist it, anymore, it doesn't right? work. Yeah, where is it? Yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. I need to update that. I, I uh, there is another one from Zoomla actually that is also quite useful. Um, I need to update that. The article is really really old, um, so I think that calculator doesn't exist anymore. It has been taken down. Um, but um, I know there is a, there is a pretty good uh, thing on the Zoomla website to kind of calculate these kind of things. So uh, maybe I'll just send to update. it to me. I, I will I will uh, in a follow up emails I will send this link as a recommendation yeah. from you. Okay. All right. Cool. So uh, 
the question to, to the attendees. Where are your questions? Uh, we have uh, 15 minutes more, so we can ask one other Excellent. One, uh, yes. the retention. Were there some good questions in the chat? Let's hope so. Yeah. Yaroslav is typing, so I hope it's not just thank you. Uh, some. <laughs> Well, while Yaroslav is typing, I, I want to ask you the question, what's the longest period you, you have seen the retention values? I have seen for two years. Um, so at Wargaming, we were definitely looking at a five-year LTV. Five-year, wow. So that means that we were also looking at the retention over five years, but also the revenue. Um, mm -hmm. And the interesting thing there, um, and that's why where it also, you know, for some games, you have to be a little bit careful also with this flat ARP DAO. So what, yes, we, what we saw there is that the ARP DAO actually, um, you know, on, that, on those cohorts goes up over time. And we see actually the same also with, uh, with, uh, with Lockwood. So those people that stick around after like 30 days or something like that, they, their ARP DAO is actually higher. Well, five years of TV is, is, is really huge. Yeah, I think it's a big risk. I mean, and that's what I told them as well. I, I mean, who knows what is going to happen in five years' time. But if you want to be, if you have the cash reserves for UA mm -hmm. uh, and you want to be go into the market very aggressively, yeah, you could do it that way. Because I think uh, if we're talking about ROI, uh, well, I can only guess, but uh, of course, uh, the payback is. Uh, became earlier than five years, uh, and so you need five year, to know five years LTV just to plan your live ops operations, right? Yeah. How much uh, money you can spend for the user on the next every next year? Yeah. Here's a question. That's a very interesting one. Yeah. Let, let me let me read it for, for you. Uh, for those users who will after that listen but not see the webinar. Uh, for, for subscription businesses, is it the same importance of long-term retention, especially with yearly or monthly subscription? It takes a lot of time to calculate retention on day 120. Yeah, so uh, on subscription, I, I, I take a different approach. So we had that um, in the uh, RuneScape MMO that was back then, when I started at least, was only subscription. <clears throat> but I also recently worked on a coloring book um, that was also subscription only. So there you have to, your model looks a little bit different because you don't necessarily look at ARPDAO, you look at the conversion rate um, and the, um, and the uh, revenue per paying user. Um, so that's, uh, that's how you then calculate your, your LTV. So it's, it's a little bit of a different thing because you have kind of these weekly, monthly, annual um, subscriptions. So it's, 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 uh, it's a different thing. A really different beast um, and the model then doesn't really hold um, it's very different yes I agree with you because uh, in a subscription businesses the you know the definition of whale is, is different the whale, the whale doesn't is, exist <laughs> yeah the whale doesn't that's exist it. a whale doesn't exist but you're looking at the so you want to understand okay how many people can I convert into uh, uh, into an offer either weekly, monthly, or annual. How many people can I convert into that, either through an intermediate step of, uh, of free trial or something like that? And then over a given time, you just need to understand the churn on each of these subscription packages. And with that, you can calculate the value of a subscriber. Mm -hmm. And if you multiply that with your, um, with your conversion rate that you reach over a certain period of time, let's say a week or two, depending on how your subscription business is operating, how much of it is free and how much it is of it is gated. So can people stick around for a while without being a subscriber? Yeah, then um, you can you can actually calculate the LTV as well. And when you build the, the report, the pie chart report of structure of revenue, for free-to-play game, uh, most of the revenue came from the users who are remain active for, let's say, six months or older. 
and for subscription businesses uh usually the most of the revenue came from users who are uh, six months or earlier so most of the money from uh in subscription businesses comes from users who is earlier in the product another yeah. question uh from the chat is there some co-occurrence between retention or impact on it and having ads in a game which is not hyper casual yeah always or not. I mean, so there are there are two ways of ads, right? Um, there are the ads that um, are opt-in, so meaning rewarded videos and these kind of things. So um, a user will have, um, um, uh, you know, they they are they are watching this video because they want to. Um, so that should not have any impact on retention. It may, and you have to kind of see that it may have some minimal impact on your on your overall on your uh, inner purchase revenues that's at least always the fear and usually it's much lower and less than people would think because it really opens opens sometimes also um, um, the game for some users that would otherwise not be able to participate um, when it comes to kind of interstitials and kind of annoying little banner ads etc that can, if it's if it's too much, if it doesn't feel natural, um, that can be very annoying. So if you're in the middle of a session and suddenly you have to wait for five seconds because there's some bloody uh, Google video running, um, if that happens too much, then um, users will leave. So there it will have impact on your retention. So you have to be a little bit careful. It, usually if you do this also, Late in the game, I remember we were uh, we were running um, MMX racing with Hutch Games, and we then added ads to the game later on. Uh, there was such an uproar in the in the whole community, and we got really beaten down in terms of ratings, etc. So that is also something if you do it afterwards um, that can have quite a negative impact on your on your new users because your rating takes a hit. Um, but yeah, um, those are kind of the, the, the dependencies. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a couple of more questions and a couple of more attendees writing right now. Uh, according to your experience, when do you players usually convert, I think convert to the players, what does it take? It is really different game by game, I would say. Um, and usually is also quite a wide uh, thing, you know, if that means kind of the median. So there is actually in, in Facebook, you can actually, uh, you know, you can check that out. There is a median for time to, to uh, purchase if you're tracking mm -hmm. that in Facebook. Um, so you can look at how long does it take until 50% of your, of, uh, of your purchases um, purchase the first time. So let's say you have a conversion rate of 2%. Um, you know, how long does it take until 50% of those actually convert? Um, you know, is that like a few days? Is that, um, you know, a week or something like that? It really depends very, very much on the game. Um, I think there is no golden rule there. Um, obviously, you know, users that spend money are uh, usually stay more and longer in the game. Um, so, you know, it's, it's good if they convert relatively soon, but um, as Vasily was saying, you know, too early, just as a super impulse, just because they like what they see, um, you know, you can't expect uh, uh, repeat purchases. So I would look at both of those metrics and you can see that, as I said, like very easily you don't have even if you don't have any tools and just like Facebook analytics you can see that uh, in there um, and it's quite quite useful to see like uh, how how long does it take and what is kind of your repur repurchase uh, percentage I hope that explains that okay thank you uh, the next question is what's the correlation between uh, daily play time lifetime play time and uh, retention Uh, whew. Okay, <laughs> that's that's. Um, I think there is a correlation for sure. Um, I think there is a healthy playtime, and that will depend on your app. 
um, you know, is there enough to do? Um, if if um, you know if the game has too much of an end too quickly, then obviously a lot of you know uh, uh, session play time will mean that your retention pretty quickly uh, or or at some point just abruptly ends. Um, I would say overall it should be probably you know if a user plays like I don't know between thirty minutes and an hour per day of your game, then you have a very very healthy product. He will not do that. He or she will not do that in one session. So let's say you have like um, six sessions at uh, at at uh, I don't know seven minutes or something like that. Um, that would be very very healthy. The difficulty that we all face with um, with session time is that nobody is tracking when somebody actually. Um, leaves the game we only track that he's not in the game anymore at, at certain intervals so it's a little bit um, blurred anyway um, but yeah that's that's kind of something and and yeah I, I think it's it's important to kind of keep keep track of these metrics because um, you know if something changes there that usually um, has impact on the on the other factors as well so if you're Bailey daily playtime maybe in the first session or um, uh, drops down it will have impact on your retention it will have impact on your lifetime playtime right so I, I think it's just important uh, in terms of like what are the key metrics it is important to also uh, uh, track that okay we have a few minutes left so I'll uh, ask you only two uh, last questions the first one is, uh, have you used long-term retention as a metric for A-B tests? Sometimes it's not enough long-living users to get start significant results, or we just release new features without tests. Yeah, um, yeah, it will, it's, it's, it's really, really hard. I mean, it's even A-B tests on, on monetization are equally hard because the, the sample sizes are just so super small. Um, so I also, we don't so with Lockwood we don't do a B tests that would uh, then track long-term retention because it, it will just be um, yeah it will take too long to get to some con con kind of conclusion the sample size will need to be huge to actually uh, get anything out of it so that's um, yeah so we we don't do any a B tests there I know there are some ways to kind of do certain things um, um, to basically, uh, uh, um, there is something called multi-banded um, testing, where you basically keep mm -hmm. the different test groups on and uh, let the system kind of double down on whatever works best, um, as long as it works. But that would probably be the better way. It's the better way for, uh, for A-B testing or testing on purchase. And I think for these kind of things, it would probably be also the better way. As for me, uh, if we are going to optimize, let's say, day 60 retention, and if we have only one or two weeks, I will use the day 7 or day 14 retention as the proxy for the day 60. I will not wait for two months. No. But that's, no. that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. All right. And the last question is uh, very generic. We have uh, 100,000 USD for app marketing. Can uh, you give examples how to invest them as effective, effective as efficient as possible? The application is a uh, two-dimensional action character-based episodic platformer. Of course, uh, Thomas uh, gives too little info, but but in general, how, what do you what do you recommend? Um, <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, it, it, there are too many variables, as you can see in the daily revenue model, right? So I wouldn't just, um, I'm not a Chinese company that has deep pockets uh, where you just put in the $100,000 and hope for the best. Um, so I would be much more careful and I would, uh, I would probably spend some money on uh, ad creators and ad testing and see if I can get um, some kind of uh, um, uh, install, um, can, can get some kind of low CPI users in there that actually of deliver what I'm looking for um, yeah so that's what I and I would probably also spend some money and some effort on making sure that you know um, that my app store app store is as 
optimum as possible because every dollar that you also spend in like advertising, if your app store is optimized, then uh, you know that pays you um, that pays you basically um, on on that as well. All right, that was the last question. Thank you very much, Oliver. I'm yeah, happy thank that you very you much. Took, took part in this webinar. Um, yeah, it was good fun. I think that was really nice, nice speech and nice discussion after that. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you for everyone who uh, visits the webinar today. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and I wish everyone a good summer evening. So let's go out from the offices now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Nice and nice and sunny here as well. Okay. Bye bye.